Thank you so much for coming here this weekend. This is really my first opportunity to see alums, devoted alums to this university here together. You know, up until now, it's been here and there when I'm traveling and when you just come and say hello, but most of the time it's by Zoom calls. And that's not the best way to get to know and feel the devotion that you have to this university. You probably don't know this, but alumni associations, I think I have a pretty good idea of how they operate and, and whether they're good or bad. Because I was in the board of directors of the Alumni Association of the University of Michigan for seven years. And you know we had 100,000 members. And they did outstanding programming. And from what have I observed so far from what Chelsea has done and this Alumni Association has done, you don't take a second spot to that association. I love my alma mater. <laughs> and I'm maize and blue, but I will tell you, I'm brown and gold. And I'm convinced by what you've done, Chelsea, and your team, it is so impressive. And the fact that you are here and the folks that we're honoring here today is so impressive and speaks so much about the ethos of this university. I'm looking, I mean, some of the folks here, I mean, they deserve being honored. Uh, but I'm looking at the end of the program, alumni community service, alumni community service, alumni community service. Not the fact that you make a lot of money or that you had a very successful professional career, but we're recognizing community service because as a university, a faith-based Lutheran university, that's what we measure ourselves by. When I talk to our graduates, when I talk at convocation, I tell them, our job is to make you into servant leaders where you don't measure your success by how many zeros there are in your paycheck, but instead by what you do for others who are less fortunate than you. And you may have heard me talk about this yesterday about homeless Jesus. I'm trying to start a new tradition where Every time somebody passes by homeless Jesus on that bench outside the union, they pause, they stop to recognize it, say a prayer, touch it, comfort the, the nail wounds in his feet. Whether you're Lutheran, Catholic, Christian, Buddhist, whatever. Even if you don't believe. But the one thing is we want to impress upon these students is to follow in your footsteps. Follow in the footsteps of the people that we're honoring here tonight where they have given so unselfishly to others because that's the kind of graduates that we produce, the kind of servant leaders we produce at this university. We're a university that educates the men and women not from Wall Street, but from Main Street, whose parents maybe took their lunches to work in paper bags. Don Lewis over here didn't have any parents. He had a parent, but his, wife, his mother died. And he literally came here on his own as a 17-year-old, drove himself from Cleveland to interview and visit this school. And he got accepted. He was going to be a phys ed major. He did something kind of backwards. Usually, it's a phys ed major. Well, usually, it's a, chemical, a chemistry major who then maybe decides maybe he's not cut out for organic chemistry and becomes a phys ed major. But he did that in reverse. A phys ed major who turned into a chemistry major and now is a distinguished dentist who gives so much of his time to the Cleveland community. That's the kind of person that we honor here tonight. We talk about Mark Gopo, who is now, who has spent his life after law school. He could be in private practice making a lot of money at some firm. But instead, he's devoted his life being a public servant as a lawyer for the federal government. He's on that first. He's one of the first folks we're we're, no, we're, we're recognizing tonight. We're recognizing uh, Denise Harlow. You may not have heard of her, but she leads one of the the biggest national service organizations in the nation. Because again, she's an exemplar of what we do at this university. So, I just want you to know that you feed into what I tell our graduates, and that's this. You are following in the footsteps of giants. And it's your obligation, it's your 
burden in a way to follow in their footsteps. I tell them, I want you to be successful engineers. I want you to be successful accountants. I want you to be successful physician assistants. And I hope you make tons of money. I hope you get married, you have kids, you have a great life. But your life will be incomplete unless you do something for others. And following in, in the words of the uh, prof, uh, prophet Matthew, what you do for the least of my brothers, you do for me. And that's what you exemplify, and that's what we're honoring tonight. We're also honoring persons of faith like Connie Brecher, who I met. And Connie, I have to tell you, we got to be cool here. My wife is here. OK? I, 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 visited, I visited Connie the other day and sat with her for a while. And I didn't tell her I was married. Uh, but she's here now. So Connie. And I also don't want you to think that I show any favoritism to some of the wardies, but Jill Von Dalen, Michigan Law. <laughs> Go blue, baby. But seriously, I want to thank you again for the role models that you have been for our students. My only regret is that they don't have an opportunity to see more of you and work alongside of you. Now, as you know, we're changing a lot of things here at this university. And as I'm increasing the demands of our faculty, of our staff, and more importantly, of our students, I'm going to be also expecting a lot from you. Because one of the things that I think has not happened enough is where we've asked, we've, we haven't asked enough of our alums, whether it be and helping us recruit students from wherever you're at. I mean, you are our greatest witnesses to the magic of this small yet mighty university that punches above its weight. We need you more involved, and that's one of the things that I've tasked Linda and the Office of Advancement to do. I haven't asked you enough to help me find internships and jobs for our students, because obviously, that is probably first and foremost why they're here. Mama and Papa Bear didn't take out home equity loans for them to have come back and live in the basement upon graduation. They're coming here to get a career. And if you could help me there, I would much appreciate it. And I just want to have as many opportunities for them to meet you and just get to know you and for you to share your stories with them. When you see these freshmen, looking like deers, you know, in the headlights, away from home for the first time. You've been there. One of the things I said at convocation this year, I said, you know, as Valpo men and women, we're brave. And my definition of bravery is you're afraid, but you still do it. And I said, Years before, each year before you in this chapel, there are people in your seats who were afraid and concerned about whether or not they could cut it. People like you. And I told them they had knots in their bellies just like you have right now, wondering whether or not they had what it takes to, to have a successful college career here at this university. And you did it, and I said, you can do it as well. So I need you to be brought in draw closer to this university. And that's been our bad. But now, if you could work with me and with our Office of Development and, and Linda and, and her team, we want to draw you in. I'm hitting the road more now. I've finished my seventh month here. But now I've been to Indianapolis a couple times. I've been to DC, of course, Chicago. I'll be there a lot because we have alums there, and there's a lot of our kids end up getting jobs there or come from Chicagoland and, of course, Indiana and in, in northwest Indiana. But I want to meet with you to help understand what you're expecting from our students as prospective employers, because you're here in part looking at your resumes and what I know about you. You could help these students learn in so many ways, and you can help me get internships and get them jobs. 
And I think no better, there's nothing better than a Valpo alum helping a Valpo student land on his or her feet. You're the best exemplar of that. So again, I want to thank you for everything that you do for us. And to the awardees, congratulations. I think, one, your family should be proud. Your parents should be proud if they're with us or no longer with us. And I want you to know that I'm so proud of you. And Connie, I'll get back to you. We'll just have to be, you know. <laughs> okay. But again, thank you so much. And again, I look forward to talking to you and visiting with you more. And uh, may God love you.